Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. Happy new comic book day, April 19th, 2023. I hope all you guys found all your comic books as you were expecting, you know, in your local comic book shop, on the new comic book shop wall, or in your cubby, or mailed to you, however you guys get your comics. I hope you guys found all the books you're looking for this week. I know I did, and uh, let's go ahead and get dived into the, the week and what I got, and uh, we'll start with last week. Um, the, the We got five books last week, so we have a top five to talk about. So uh, in a, in order of least favorite to favorite, we're gonna start with issue with the with my fifth favorite issue, uh, Carnage number twelve, uh, continuing the storyline. Uh, kind of at the end of this, it wraps up and says, you know, to be continued in uh, Carnage Reigns Alpha, and so uh, that was that was Carnage. I I've. I don't know, I'm still at a toss-up with this because I kind of was getting into this Detective Jonathan Shade character and they, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on now. He's, he's, I'm just going to spoil slightly the title, I guess. If you haven't been reading it, you probably don't care. Uh, but yeah, Jonathan Shade, he bonded with Carnage a couple issues back and ever since then I've just kind of been like, oh, really? You're gonna you're gonna have the guy that was the good guy now he's bonded with the bad guy, and this, and so everybody's a bad guy now. Everybody's a bad guy. I I'm not sure where this is going. At the very very tail end of this, you know, we see uh, Miles is showing up, and like I said, this I guess is leading into Carnage Reigns Alpha. Um. So yeah, I I'm not I'm not 100 sold on that. They're gonna have to try a little harder like I said I'm, I'm just I'm just I'm butthurt about it what can you do <laughs> uh so my fifth favorite or fourth favorite issue would be Batman Incorporated number seven from last week uh pretty pretty fun stuff really held up a lot by the art the art in this in this series is just crazy good uh shout out to uh Bandini and Colors by Locus yeah, it's the art in it is is always super super good. Um, kind of interesting. We ended on a bit of a of a pretty mic drop cliffhanger. Uh, don't want to say who, but yeah, it seems like somebody's died, and uh, pretty close to you know the the group, and uh, I'm kind of surprised to see where that's gonna go actually. So. Yeah, we're continuing on with Batman Incorporated. I'm enjoying it. Um, and then uh, number three would be X Men Twenty One. Uh, just a, a continuing to be a really fun read. Um, you know, there a bunch of fights were going down. They kind of wrapped up what was going on with Forge, um, except that he he ends up coming back with. Uh, with the nowhere head you know what i'm saying like this big giant space head and uh that actually ends up getting used by Jean gray pretty quickly so uh not to spoil anything that happens there but uh everything's pretty interconnected I i'm a bit i'm a bit sad on this one that it looks like uh after this it says uh you know next uh you have to read captain marvel issue whatever i don't know i haven't been reading captain marvel why are they doing this to me <laughs> i don't mind when they cross over with titles i'm already reading that's good but i have no idea so maybe i might have to pick up captain marvel just to keep up with what's going on with my x-men but uh yeah that falls at number three it's just been a fun read uh the art's been been pretty good um i don't know what else to say i i kind of hope or I, I would like to see them not keep doing the crossovers and just let uh let let Jerry Duggan tell tell a consistent story arc without keep he keeps getting chopped up because X Men's such a popular crossover title I guess he keeps getting his story arcs chopped up by the, they have to go and uh, share it with another title which I I feel like this time it's kind of Jerry Duggan's design because. 
the brood stuff has been building for a while in the X-Men. And then number two, here it is, the what 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 got number one and number two, right? Number two was Guardians of the Galaxy number one. Um I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh it was it was kinda interesting. It was told from the perspective of of uh of not a Guardians of the Galaxy person, like like the one of the people that they saved uh during this story. Uh, it, it was told from their perspective and how they kind of saw the situation. And so that was interesting. And what is going on in that? I do not want to spoil at all for anybody, but it, I, I'm definitely sucked in like, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Ah, they have to save somebody. And, and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> The story also, I wanted to throw this, I wanted to throw this in there too. The story felt very science fiction-y, Star Wars style. Um, so if that's kind of the kind of thing that you're into, um, I definitely recommend it. I think you'll enjoy it. It had a, it had a very strong Star Wars feel as well as uh, just being, being really good. Um, additionally, it's using all of the, um, the movie characters. So it's, the the cast and crew you know is is all the movie characters so if you like the the movie characters um and you like star wars kind of a, a feel like like the guardians of the galaxy movies kind of were right um i think i think you guys will really enjoy that and number one it, th this was a tough this was a tough choice between number one and number two but number one i'm gonna give it to miles morales spider-man number five um the uh, mainly because of the uh, art um you know like like it's like it's a combination of story and art but the art in this is so just beautiful um this is one of the new artists uh federico uh vicentini and um we've got valenza on colors just really really making his art pop and um it's it's awesome. It's kind of the, a different style than uh, than we're used to seeing, and um, the new bad guy Rabble is she is cold blooded and out for vengeance, right? And uh, there was this one panel in the in the book as well that I just yeah it gave me the feels. You, you get uh, Miles. I'm. I, I'm just going to describe it because everybody knows the, so it's an homage. It's like a full panel homage to Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, where he's kind of holding that guy and saving him, right? Except in this one, he's, uh, he's holding his dad and his mom and saving them from this, their house that's burning down, right? And, uh, you know, dad's got baby sister, uh, is holding on to baby sister. So he's holding all three of his family members and kind of swinging out in his poses. Uh, and it was just, I was like, I was kind of like, wow. And there's some other, uh, scenes as well where Miles is kind of teared up and emotional. Uh, Rabble gets very emotional and the artwork is just, I, I, I can't. I can't fault it. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the story because, um, Rabbles just s seems like a very, uh, dangerous foe. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on board at the end. It, it, uh, you know, this doesn't really spoil anything because this happens in Spider-Man stories a lot at the end Rabble, you know, everyone survives. But Rabble does uh, leave Miles in the hospital with wounds, and he's, you know, he was unconscious for a while. Um, I feel like Rabble's maybe gonna disappear for a little while, and we're gonna kind of have a different story arc. But I, I definitely think that's a character that we could see again. Um, so let's go ahead and get dived into what I got this week. Um, as always, if you guys do like this kind of content, like, comment, and subscribe helps the YouTube algorithm. Let's get dived into the loud and mysterious black bag here. We've got the new comic set here, but I got something comic related that I've been looking for one of these. I keep looking and I finally found one there. I guess they're a little more rare to find because he's a popular character, but I finally found my Wolverine Funko Pop. 
Um, I was a little bit particular. I wanted like a a, a yellow, a, kind of a <laughs> X Men uh, ninety seven cartoon series look. Uh, color scheme that's what I was really going for I, I would have settled for a brown one um, and you know maybe if I find a cool uh, you know brown and, and black I might grab that later but I, I found my Wolverine Funko Pop to add to my Funko Pop collection I've got a Deadpool so Wolverine can hang out with Deadpool <laughs> um, and so for this week's books we got uh, Amazing Spider-Man 24. Um, I don't know what to say too much about this series. Uh, we're going to find out really soon. They're saying 25 is like the big, big um, reveal. Or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Is the big... Put, we'll put Wolverine up here for, for the show. Is the big sort of reveal on uh, everything that happens and has and happened between Mary Jane and Peter to cause them to break up, to cause Mary Jane to have two children and be married to this guy. Um, you know, couple issues back, so not too spoiler heavy here. But, uh, we, you know, we know now that Mary Jane is married, or, or is not married, but the guy that she was, that she's married to now, a year ago when this all transpired, she got stuck in limbo with this guy and Peter was sent back to New York City. And I guess time works differently in limbo and passes more quickly. And so how many years or, or whatever is, is kind of where I'm, I'm thinking they're going. How many years does Mary Jane spend with this guy in limbo where they go through adventures and he saves her and she falls in love with him and then they end up with kids and I'm guessing, like, you know what I'm saying? But even that kind of is maybe a little too much. And I'm like, ah, I would have I would have preferred an, an, a more easier explanation. Or, you know, uh, we had to break up because, uh, I, I don't know, man. I'm not a writer. <laughs> but I'm a little disappointed with it so far. Hopefully 24 and 25 can, can explain explain it a little bit better for me and or, or maybe they've got a you know what I'm think the way I'm thinking they're going is completely wrong and and they're going another way anyways there it is <laughs> we picked up continuing I can't not get amazing spider-man um and you got the Romita jr art you know and uh yeah how much longer are we gonna get that it's kind of this throwback to uh to a older time uh homage run and I, I'm, I'm enjoying it for that um so next up we have uh, red goblin number three i'm not sure if this is a mini series or a continuing ongoing i've been having a bunch of fun with the banter between the kid and the symbiote and uh as long as it continues along that route um yeah i'm definitely enjoying it i don't know we have like this undead goblin guy that he's fighting it's pretty crazy the story is pretty far out there. <laughs> um, we'll see if that's going to tie into all the other Carnage stuff, too. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff from last week uh, was tying into Carnage at the end. Like, the Miles Morales at the end was like, you know, next read Carnage. Uh, you know, the story continues in Carnage Reigns Alpha. So, yeah, they are really pushing that Carnage Reigns Alpha. There was a bunch of books I read last week that, that ended with uh, continues in Carnage Reigns Alpha. <laughs> and then, uh, next up we got a X Force 39. And this cover, this cover's sweet too. Check that cover out. Um, you know, Wolverine is, well, X 23, if you, whatever you want to call her. She's not actually on X Force, but interest, interestingly enough, she's on the cover there. Uh, Colossus really isn't particularly on X Force, but he shows up sometimes. So, We'll see what's going on there. I mean, the the storyline has been that that they're all chasing Beast and trying to trying to get Beast. That's kind of been uh, what's going on in both the Wolverine and X Force, which are both written by uh, Percy. Um, so he kind of intertwines those. They're they're 
you have to read both Wolverine and X Force, I feel like, because the stories intertwine a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I know Wolverine's super mad at Beast now, and he, he he's out for vengeance. <laughs> and then we have our lone DC book, but it's a big DC book for me because it's a every week it comes out. It's uh, generally my favorite uh, read of the week. We shall see how it breaks down next week. Um, God. Nightwing number 103 and check this cover out this cover is super um Bruno Redondo is 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 the master of doing something unique and different that you haven't seen before and that's one of the things that usually makes Nightwing stand out every every week it comes out is uh Bruno Redondo's art and so I'm not sure. It doesn't look like he's actually drawing this issue. I see credits to a bunch of people, actually. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I I'm still looking forward to it. It's uh, Tom Taylor seems to be kind of writing up a storm here at DC lately. Um, and there's actually some books coming up that I, I might be checking out some more DC. So stay tuned for that. Um, I know there was some new number one titles that have me like, okay, I might, I might pick up number one and see if you, if you can, if you can suck me into your stories. Um, so that's what I have today. Remember, uh, if, if you've watched this far into the video, uh, like, comment, subscribe would super help, be helpful, helps the YouTube algorithm spread me out for more people to find me. Um, as always, we'll see you guys next time and have a great day.